Welcome back. I'm Pat Tice, WA0TDA, and you can reach me at my ham radio call sign, WA0TDA at ARRL.net. That's Whiskey Alpha Zero Tango Delta Alpha at ARRL.net. As you can see behind me, I have an ICOM IC7200. Yes, I can sit in my ham shack and use it. That's perfectly fine. But there are plenty of times when I'd just rather not. I might want to be somewhere else. Okay, that's certainly possible. I can be somewhere else, like on the north shore of Lake Superior, with a nice beverage watching the lake, and have my Android phone along with me. It's pretty easy to bring along, and I can use my cell phone company's data plan to access the Internet. So, the IC7200 is a great rig, and I do enjoy it quite a lot operating right from the radio in the ham shack. But frankly, these days I'm more likely to operate it using my mobile phone, and even though I might not be on vacation, I might just be upstairs or sitting on the patio in the backyard. It's convenient, and I find that I get on the air a little bit more often. It's good for certain types of operation, so why not use your PC or your Android phone or an Android tablet on a wireless connection to go ahead and operate another person's station. There are lots of stations that uh, will, will be available to you on the uh, RC Forbes software. So you can find out more about that at remotehams.com. But right now let's take a look at a short video that I've made about using the Android application on a Google Nexus 6 smartphone. Okay, let's take a look at the RC Forb Android application. When we open it up, we get a list of stations. The ones highlighted in yellow at the top have been added to my favorites. When you're using this app, it's much more convenient to set your favorites. I'm going to pick 100 watt WA0 TDA IC7200. And the remote information screen comes up. I click OK. And there I have my interface. I can now use the numpad key to enter a frequency. I'm hearing WWV. I can check uh, other frequencies by either entering them in with this keypad or if I'm done with the keypad I can just use the go back arrow and get the complete interface. I can also turn the virtual knob here and my frequency display will change, and this actually works pretty well, but it can be a little tricky to get right on frequency. Now I'm at 9.999.90, and I want to be at 10, so I do have a button here that says up, and boom, I'm back on 10 megahertz again, listening to WWV. The mode is lower sideband at the moment, and looking around the screen I see nothing that changes the mode. So I'm going to have to go up to the menu key and look at the drop down menu. And here I see mode, lower sideband, upper sideband, AM. So I'm going to pick AM and now I am on AM mode and I can go back by choosing the menu key and then the frequency brings me back to my main screen. Now let's go to a memory. I have some local memories saved in my application and let's see, let's go to um, 3.925 megahertz which is the 
pico net frequency that I use quite a bit. Uh, to get rid of the memory screen, I can use my back arrow once again, and now I'm ready to go. Um, on this radio, I can press the tune button. Now the radio has tuned and I'm ready to transmit. Push to talk is right here. Whiskey Alpha Zero Tango Delta Alpha test. And it's as simple as that to use this software. There are also memories on the remote itself and you can find that in this list. So I can go down to, um, let's see, 14.3 megahertz, and I click on that. And now I'm on the maritime uh, mobile net frequency, and I don't hear anything on there at the moment. But um, what has changed for me is the frequency, and the frequency display is 14.300, and the mode has also been saved in memory as USB. So this makes it a lot easier to go back and forth. Let's say I wanted to check WWV again using the memory. And in doing so, I find that it goes to 10 megahertz with AM for modulation. So the mode is now correct. All that stuff has been saved in the memory in advance by the remote station owner. And it's propagated via the host software. So if you click on the remote memory when using this application, you'll find that uh, the uh, host owner has saved a number of frequencies, most likely, that he or she uh, would find useful. I can use the back arrow again, and if I use the back arrow twice, I will get this question, do you want to disconnect, yes or no? If now you're done using the application, you can say yes. If not, no. There are uh, some other uh, buttons on here that may or may not be activated. Um, one is a test button in blue, right next to the menu button. And on this particular remote, the test mode is not available so it may give me an error message. Yes, it says remote information, button test is not allowed, so I just click OK to get rid of that screen. However, on some of these um, uh, uh, remotes, the test button is able to be activated, and when it is engaged, uh, you can use this as a talk around application like a VOIP application. Um, so if you've got other people logged into this remote at the same time that you're logged into the remote, just turning the volume down here on the smartphone, uh, if you've got other people logged in at the same time, and many of you can be logged into the station at the same time, then with the test button engaged, you're going to find that the remote will not actually transmit RF, but instead it's just like a VOIP application such as Skype or a number of the other ones, Google Hangouts and so forth, where you can have multiple people join in a conversation and it doesn't go out on the air. Um, if the test button is not activated, you can still have many uh, users connected and you can uh, talk at different times, but what you say is going to go out on the air. So that's an important distinction. Um, there are, are different, many different types of radios can be used with the RC Forb host software. However, this client uh, looks pretty much the same on Android, no matter which radio you're connecting to. So. Uh, let's just say, okay, this is an IC7200. Let's disconnect. I'll say yes this time. Now I get this blank screen, and I go to the tab that says Remotes. And now I'm going to pick a station that is using a Kenwood TS480 SAT. That's the Handy Ham, Ham Club W0EQO. 
Okay, so here's my greeting that comes up. I say okay, and now I see that this one is uh, <clears throat> available. I might want to go and check chats on the chats tab and just make sure that I'm the only station connected. That way I can go ahead and tune and not have to bother anyone. However, this software also does allow me to click a button that says ask to tune and then down here it sent a text message saying may I tune the remote. And that's good operating practice with this software. Okay, let's go back to the radio by clicking the radio control tab up in the upper left. And <clears throat> now I see that using the test button, uh, I could now talk to somebody else if there were anybody else on, but there isn't. I've checked chat and nobody has joined me. Um, so now anytime I tr press the transmit button or the push to talk button, uh, it's not going out on the air. I can deactivate that test button and then things return to normal. You'll notice that even though I'm now using a very different radio from the original ICOM IC7200, this Kenwood TS480 SAT, the interface here is exactly the same on the Android application. If you're used to using the Windows PC application, uh, the button layout and uh, so forth and the features available will be different because that's set up differently by each radio owner. But here on the Android application, every single radio looks exactly the same. Now, some of you have asked questions about CW. Can you operate CW? Well, the answer is that depends on the radio itself. The radio, if it has an interface that's put in place by the owner for keying, it is able to operate CW. To get to the CW, what you would do is, well, first of all, let's uh, go, let's get off of this radio, and let's go back to my own radio, WA0TDA here, and now let's go to the um, local memory, and I'm just going to go down to um, 1.966 megahertz on uh, 160 meters. This will not be used today because it's in the middle of the day. The absorption is so high there are no other stations going to be there. So we can go ahead and tune. Tuning is complete now, so uh, what we're going to do is just go ahead and identify WA0TDA testing. Okay, now what we're going to do is go to the uh, menu setting here, and we're going to use again the drop-down menus. Uh, the first one is, as we recall from finding WWV and changing to AM mode, uh, now we're on LSB mode, so let's just click on that, and we're going to go down here and choose CW. So now we're in CW mode. Oh, here we go. That's right. It's under the menu. Go to CW, and now that brings up a separate page. Um, however, we did have to go to the drop-down menu first to do the CW from this page. I never do CW from the Android app, <laughs> so it's easier to do from the Windows PC. Um, or if you want, you can build up a, um, an interface to key. Information on doing that is on the internet that you can plug in a, a bug or a straight key. But anyway, um, so you click in encoder, that brings up uh, your screen. Oops. Here I gotta get... Okay, WA0TDA. So, now we've got WA0TDA in there. We just 
click send and it is now keying and the keying has stopped. So um, that's how you get to the CW page and uh, the uh, letters that were sent as well as the characters are represented in these two boxes. Now these were covered up by the um, visual keypad there on the, on the touch screen so you couldn't see them but it did send WA0TDA and these are the Morse code characters represented by dots and dashes that it sent. So that's how that works and um, you can uh, set up along the right hand side here CQ uh, CQ by 2 DX call DE uh, 5995NN in other words my name QTH grid and so forth the setup key is on the bottom for you to access all of that stuff so um, theoretically it's possible to send CW right from your smartphone like this um, <clears throat> I have to uh, point out that this is only available as an Android application from the Google Play Store. Its cost is under $10. It is not available for iOS, so um, uh, too bad, but uh, this, this won't work on an iPhone. But you can use any Android tablet or Android smartphone, and if you're using a tablet, it works great on Wi-Fi. If you're using a smartphone, uh, this works great on uh, mobile data. You should really have high-speed mobile data. Uh, I know it works well for me uh, all kinds of different places on T-Mobile. So um, as long as you're within uh, cell tower range and you've got a good data connection to your mobile provider, this is a nice way to send CW. All right, so... Um, I also never do, <laughs> never use this while driving. <laughs> it's just like any other smartphone. So here we are back uh, to the main screen. I'm going to go to menu and drop downs and I'm going to choose lower sideband again and then menu frequency and that brings us up to this screen once again. Uh, there are lots of other buttons uh, that you can uh, explore at your leisure, but um, many of those are the, the main ones that you're going to use. Um, <clears throat> others are band plus and band minus, so band plus for example is going to take you up a band um, or a, a portion of the band, uh, so several clicks there and we're up to 40 meters from 160. Um, there's a, a if you want to use split, if you're a DX operator or working um, like a special event, uh, there is a split setting. If you do use the split setting on anyone's remote, please return it back to normal when you leave so that somebody else doesn't have an embarrassing accident transmitting on the wrong frequency uh, when they uh, use it. You do have remote memory, which we've discussed, local memory, which you can set up in your application on your device. So that's unique to each device and if I set this up on my Android phone then no matter which station I connect to I, I always have my list of favorite uh, frequencies and modes uh, here in the local memory. Uh, you can uh, switch VFOs A, B, make B equal to A, um, change the tuning um, uh, speed, in other words, 1 kilohertz, uh, 10 kilohertz, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> the numpad brings this up so that you can direct enter frequencies. Um, there's a cancel button if you make a mistake. Just use the back button, whatever it is on your Android application or your smartphone to get rid of that menu. And uh, then there are some other buttons here that can be uh, set up somewhat to your liking. Uh, the tune button is always right here, so that one's available and just requires a, 
a push to tune. Um, however, some stations do not have the tuner activated and there may be information on the station owner's website or in that greeting that you get when you first log on to the station. So let's look at another station. Disconnect from this one. I'm going to go back to W0EQO up in Park Rapids, Minnesota. And let's check chats. Yes, we are the only one on at this time. So back to radio control we go. And now if I try to press tune on here, it says the tune button is not allowed. So, okay, well what do we do then? The answer is we go to menu and now buttons. And in the buttons page, we've got transmit and TXT. TXT happens to be what we use with this radio. It's called Transmit Tune and it's available on some Kenwoods. So now if I press that, I see that it has tuned with an SWR of 1.2 to 1. Okay, and let's make sure we're not transmitting again. We'll go back to the menu, frequency, and then identify our transmission. WA0TDA through remote station W0EQO. So I have mentioned my own call sign and then because I'm using a remote station I use the call sign of the remote station and I would do that uh, at the end of every 10 minutes of talking and at the end of a series of transmissions. Uh, there is a page button and that will toggle us through a variety of different pages. Um, if the station does happen to have a rotator, uh, you'll get this map and you can move this circle around to change the rotator and turn the antenna. There is no amplifier available. If it were, it would appear on this page. Uh, this is your CW page, so this is just going through all of the different pages. Switch is not available, this says. That means uh, for a remote antenna switch. And then we come back in the circle uh, to the frequency display and the main frequency page that always opens up with this application. In the upper, far upper right hand corner, there are three vertical dots. If you click on those, you're, you get choices of settings, push-to-talk options, audio options, voice memories, and about the application. And those you can set up on your own. But for the settings, um, let's just take a look in there. Station call sign WA0TDA. Um, my locator is in there, EN34MV. Uh, DX uh, cluster node for my client, um, <clears throat> the remote radio type, uh, my username, which is my call sign, um, and keep screen on. I've got that checked because I want to keep the phone from going to sleep while I'm listening to, um, let's say I'm listening to a net and um, what happens is if the phone goes to sleep, everything stops and the radio disconnects. So I keep that checked. Um, enable swipe tabs I also have checked because I like that feature. You can experiment with it um, if you want. Um, I do not have auto PTT on test. Um, if you decide that's necessary for your particular radio, you can do that. Um, if you're putting your radio uh, on the uh, on the air, for example, and enable landscape, I have left unchecked because I like to use this application in the vertical mode when holding the phone. That just works best for me. So anyway, then you can use your back key to get back to the main screen. And again, these tabs on the top, chats. Uh, it shows right here whether anybody else is connected. It just shows WA0TDA. Control op WA0TDA is blinking. I have my Ask to Tune button. Um, and in this screen here, 
I have everything that's going on in the chat room and then the, on the bottom line that is if I want to actually put in a chat and if I just touch that that brings up my keyboard and I can go ahead and put something in there. Um, another tab is the DX cluster tab and that is not connected at the moment but if you want to look at a DX cluster it's capable of doing that of course by default you do have internet if you're using this application so back to chats and this tab here radio control this is what's going to come up when you first start the application and then on the far left tab the remotes these are the other remotes a long list of them all around the world um, what you want to do though is if you go to this tab while you're connected you'll note that W0EQO is blinking white yellow white yellow that indicates that you are connected so if you want to go to another station you want to disconnect you just use the back button on your phone and it'll say do you want to disconnect say yes and now I'm free to go to some other station so here's another station W0ZSW and I check my chats tab I see I'm the only one connected so then I know I can go ahead and tune around and use it if I want if you would connect to a station and find that there's another person or maybe several more people connected um, you would definitely have to ask to tune the radio because they got there first so that's a review of the protocol to back out of the application I'm going to click once on the left hand arrow I get my do you want to disconnect screen yes I do and now let's say I want to leave the application so I click that left arrow again and I get exit are you sure you want to exit I say yes and now I'm out of the screen and back to my regular ham radio screen on my Android phone okay well that's about it for this application thanks for listening WA0TDA